One of the major mistakes that young programmers make is they bite off more than they can chew. Let's face it, development isn't a simple skill that one can pick up immediately, but it becomes even more challenging when you're not learning from the right resources. But what are the critical mistakes programmers make? The way I see it, there are two major problems. First, learning programming tools and languages ahead of their time. And two, learning complex languages that might be irrelevant for general purpose use or the student's desired goals. These critical mistakes can lead to unwanted outcomes and at worst, wasted time. But because we don't have too many people talking about this problem, we tend to ignore it and just push it under the rug. However, the lack of competence and feeling uncertain about the skills leads to tech burnout and imposter syndrome. And they are one of the bigger reasons why people often end up quitting development field. So I believe that there must be a curriculum or a roadmap to make sure that you're learning from the right tools. Otherwise, you're burning yourself out with any significant outcome from your efforts. But how do you tackle this problem? The way I see it, you can start by filtering languages. For a beginner, it's important to focus on critical fundamentals and to leverage well-known, supported programming languages. So why to avoid certain languages? When I say you need to avoid particular languages, there are a couple reasons for it. Firstly, these languages may be too hard for beginners, and it can force you to quit programming because you might not find it that easy. It's a common mistake most young programmers make, and the results aren't too great. Moreover, even if a language is easy to learn, it might not be for you at a beginner level. For example, you must concentrate on developing basic programming skills and invest more time in understanding programming dynamics. At this point, you don't need to learn a language or framework that's developed for specialized use cases. You can always get those languages later. Secondly, I would never recommend a language if it's outdated or not well supported, because even if you learn the language, it won't help you in your career. So it would effectively be a waste of time and effort. So based on these factors, here are some programming languages that you must avoid as a beginner. First, let's discuss about the languages that are hard for beginners. First, let's talk about the languages that are quite complex in terms of understanding, syntax, and their applications. Now, it doesn't mean that they are not relevant. In fact, some of these languages are must learn when you develop into mature programmers. It's just that you don't need to learn them right away. Otherwise, you might question the point of learning programming in the first place. So here are some languages that are too complex for beginners and must be avoided if you're new to the world of programming. First, we have Go. Go or Golang is a very popular language in the development world. In fact, it's one of the most profitable languages to learn in terms of job roles. But if you start with programming, Golang can be a bit of a nightmare to learn. It's structured and concurrent programming language. It's also great for cross-platform operations since you can use it on Linux, Windows, and Mac. Most of Google applications run on Golang, but because Golang is based on C, it isn't as simplified as some of the other popular programming languages. There's tougher syntax and complicated structures. So if you start to program, make sure you reach Golang when you have a significant understanding of programming basics. Next, we have C++. Developers agree that C++ is one of the most complex languages to learn on the market. It was introduced back in 1983 and it follows a tough syntax rules. Because there is so much syntax to focus on, a new programmer often fails to concentrate on the core programming concepts. For example, a semicolon goes missing and your entire program can fail. So as a young programmer, it can be frustrating, especially when you have no debugging experience. As you mature into a programmer, you can make the best use of C++, but it's best to avoid it at the start, unless you have a solid support structure or a mentor to help you through. Next we have Swift. Swift isn't all that swift in terms of learning, especially for beginners. It follows an object-oriented style, which is one of the reasons for its complexity. Also, Swift is developed by Apple, so you can understand the level of complexity it's likely to have. Even though it's a great alternative to Objective-C, it's not recommended language for beginners. The next language is PHP. PHP follows an object-oriented style, but it shades a C and C++ in its structure. As PHP is the backbone of many modern web development tools, it continues to evolve and developers are keen to make it more effective for more users. However, it's something that you shouldn't learn when you're first programming. Moreover, PHP has been influenced by Java, Perl, and C++, which are all quite complex on their own. Next we have Haskell. It's not the most popular name in programming world, but Haskell has an effective language for many reasons. You'll find a general purpose style in Haskell. It doesn't follow OOP. It's a functional language, but even though Haskell is a great choice for development, it follows strict syntax rules. As a programmer, static typing is one of those challenges you face when you're learning a programming language. Being a strongly static typing language, Haskell can be tough to learn for beginners, and it uses type systems and semantics for executable code, which isn't too common with other programming languages. 
Now let's talk about languages that aren't worth a lot. Now there are some languages that are easy to use, but are quickly becoming outdated as new languages keep replacing them. So if you're learning these languages, it's possible that you won't get enough application and it could waste time and energy. First, we have Visual Basic. Visual Basic is widely used in the industry, but is now coming quickly obsolete. Some modern tools are taking over, so we don't hear enough of Visual Basic these days. And say so we hear a lot more about .NET and C Sharp. According to the latest rankings of programming languages, a lot of developers hate Visual Basic nowadays. Maybe it's because there are easier alternatives available. Comparably, .NET has more robust frameworks and it's easily accessible for Java and other language developers. Next, we have Objective-C. It's a name you don't hear too often these days. Swift is one of the successors for Objective-C and it will keep replacing ladder in coming days. Nowadays, most iOS devices and platforms use Swift instead of Objective-C. In a way, it's refurbishment of the older language and what makes it further suitable option than Objective-C. So while Swift might be a complicated language in terms of syntax, it's great application-wise. In any case, Objective-C is a preferable option because it's losing its audience. Next is Lisp. Lisp is one of the oldest languages around and it's not worth learning from a modern age perspective. It's older than Fortran, so you can understand why there's no use in learning this language for a professional career. A better alternative would be Python, particularly for AI, thanks to better frameworks for deep learning and machine learning. Next, we have CoffeeScript. CoffeeScript is a relatively new language dating back only 10 years. However, it's quickly becoming outdated and it's just one of the languages disliked right now. In the modern market, there are not enough uses of CoffeeScript, so learning it could be a waste of time. Even though it was designed to counter flaws in JavaScript, the language hasn't lived up to its potential. As a result, people are focusing on alternatives. Next, we have Perl. Perl was once considered a write-only language, but it has taken a great hit in the past. Some developers took the task to stabilize Perl by introducing Perl 6, but didn't help the cause too much. Modern developers prefer Python over Perl, since Python is relatively easier and a far more effective language for many reasons. So for all beginners willing to learn a programming language, I suggest you start with Python. It's easy and useful, and it promises a lot of good stuff for budding programmers. If you found this content useful, please give a like and consider subscribing for future content. See you in the next video.